Kia ora guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel and uh, welcome to a video that I did not expect to have to be filming. Um, we are a couple days off going to the west coast for a uh, full drive trip, go do some tough tracks, super excited. Last video you saw, we got Lando all sorted, new axle, everything all looking good. Sent it off for a warrant of fitness today and it came back with a fail. So, what was wrong? Um, it needs some mud flaps, which are easy to sort. Um, one of the seat belts needs replacing, which I've got a spare. And they want a full width bumper. So, for many years I've been meaning to finish Lando's bumper. Obviously, it kind of stops there. It's not got any wings. So, um, apparently it is now a failure to not have a full width bumper. Um, I mean, <laughs> the rules are the rules, uh, like it or not, i got to get a full width bumper, so we'll tackle the easy jobs first, um, just crank out the uh, mud flaps, unfortunately I've gone and uh, cut off the mounts, um, because I needed more clearance for the 35s, so we'll have to figure something out there, um, on one side, the other side still has the mount, um, whack a seat belt on it, and then we will crack straight into, uh, making some sort of wings for this, uh, bar that's, uh, been needing finishing for quite some time. Um, it's about four o'clock now. I snuck out of work early and um, yeah time to get into it So first things first I shot into the local truck supply store picked up a big mud flap uh, Like 35 bucks and we'll just cut it down the middle and then we can uh, trim it as we need hideous warrant spec mud flap that's got to keep him happy surely oh that's hideous almost feel embarrassed putting that on my truck but uh needs must anyway onto the other side won't bother filming that it's raining don't want to get the camera wet so mud flaps all done and just in time it's really started raining now anyway next step is the seatbelt um, this was the seatbelt in it, it's just lost the casing from it unfortunately. So we've got this one here, um, off a wrecked truck but it's had an angle grinder run through it. So obviously it is no good. So I'm going to try to pop the casing off of that and then stick the casing with that. We'll see how we get on uh, prying that one open. So uh, that's a nice and easy fix, um, obviously we need to seal it up so I'll just use a little bit of sealant, clean it up, use some sealant and um, then I'll tape it together and then unwind the tape um, once the sealant's gone off and that should hold the cover. Um, obviously you should not go mucking around with seat belts, however that is purely a cover, um, obviously a little bit for comfort, however um, that'll be just fine. Um, so yeah, another job half done, um, I'll grab some sealant and glue that up now. guys well that is one successfully repaired seat belt um, I will go slap this back in the truck just uh, clicks in um, so we'll biff that in um, and then obviously I'll just take the tape off tomorrow morning when it's the um, sealant's dry and that'll hold the uh, cover together just fine and uh, that means it's now onto the fun jobs well funner jobs um, would be fun job if it wasn't um, Monday night and uh, yeah when I would rather be doing you know packing for the trip but anyway it's all good Keep on uh, keeping on. Our next mod is uh, fixing the dual battery setup. So um, I've got two Optima 
D34s. Um, they're about 675 cranking amp, I reckon. I believe, off the top of my head, cold cranking amp. Um, so decent sized batteries. Um, nice just being dry cell and sealed. Um, makes uh, life easy. However, um, when I did the dual battery setup, I did not know what I was doing. I just popped into JCar and bought one of their, uh, I can't remember what they call it, like 140 amp dual battery setups. I was like, sweet as, it's going to, you know, help the winch out. Wired it all up, bought another Optima, slapped it in and noticed no difference at all. And I was like, oh, that's weird, you know. Anyway, never really thought anything of it. I thought I'd, you know, done everything I needed to do. However, a while back, and I should have sorted this long ago, however, you forget about it until you go and use the winch and remember how gutless this thing is. Um, essentially, the setup it's got now is only running off one battery. So what happens is the alternator charges the starting battery and then you've got the uh, second battery linked up. Um, however, you've got an isolator over here. So essentially it puts power from this battery through to that one and keeps them both topped up. However, it stops this battery being able to draw power from this one. Um, so that's perfect for your 12 volt setups, your camping setups, um, you're running your fridge, your, oh, who even knows what 12 volt setup you've got. But yeah, it's perfect for that because it means that your second battery um, can get drained um, overnight or whatever and you're not going to drain your starting battery. However, that also means that your winch cannot draw any power from the second battery. So there's different setups you can do. Um, there's like little switches you can put in so that it uh, like stops isolating the two and it links them up again. I could just put an isolator switch in, however with the amount of time I've got, um, I gave uh, Rickett and Auto Electric a quick buzz and um, was like, guys it's four o'clock, can you make me some cables by five? And uh, they've pulled through. So they only had 35 mil cable um, in stock, which is a little smaller than ideal. However, anything is gonna be better than just running one battery and um, these uh, winches, they only come with 35 mil cable anyway. As you guys know, not the biggest fan of this Runva winch. However, I've certainly not been doing it any favours. Um, once we get the warrant, if there's time, I've also got a slightly lower ratio gearbox to slap in it to get a bit more pulling power. Lose a bit of speed, but for what we do, really doesn't matter. So, yeah, we'll do that if we've got time. However, next thing, um, I know it's not WAF related, however, it's a quick job. We'll just slap these two cables in. So, yeah, stoked. Dual batteries are all sorted. Kind of hate myself for doing it this way because it's not very pretty. But ended up just running the wires along the top. Um, there's a couple of tabs of metal just down in there which made it too tight to run the cabling through um, and up through that uh, radiator support. So um, for the amount of time I had, um, it would have involved probably pulling the radiator out to actually get something get an angle at it where you could trim that material out of the way so amount of time we've got this will do it's um reasonably tidy i just need to cut the tails off um but yeah there you go two cables ran pretty tidy all the way across so that is finally all of the slightly less fun jobs done uh time to crack into the bar work um i've got my girlfriend elsa coming over who is going to give me a hand um Often with things like bar work, it's so handy just having a spare pair of hands to hold stuff while you tack it, whatever. Um, hold stuff while you look at it, you try and see if you like the look of it or not. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. Anyway, time to grab some metal out, plan something out, and uh, yeah, crack into it I reckon. So first things first, we need to square up um, these ends, so I'll cut along that line so it's equal with the uh, chassis rail back there. So I'll cut that out, and... Um, make some plates for the end, cap it off so we've got something to weld to or mount stuff to and then we'll just grab some pipe and just go along and round and then just some smaller diameter stuff along and up so keeping it simple, I don't want this thing to look ugly but I'm also like it's already 10 past 7 and I am blooming tired and I really don't want to be doing it a late night and it has to be done for tomorrow because WAF has to be done tomorrow, just simply has to be done so game on I reckon, we'll crack out the grinder and get into it.
plates are all ready to weld on. Um, so it's come up looking pretty good, fits up real nice and uh, didn't take too long. And then we've got Ilsa on uh, removing the old, uh, old dual battery setup because I couldn't be bothered. Thank you. And um, yeah, we're gonna crack out the bit of welding and then we can get into the tube work itself. Right, well, we've got the uh, bumper plated off on the ends. Um, came out looking really tidy, ground it back. Um, and the next step is to cut the 32 nominal bore pipe for the top bars. Um, I found some pre-bent pipe floating around, which is fortunate because I um, went to grab out a stick of uh, 25 and found that I've run out. So uh, that's pretty fortunate because uh, that would have been a bit of a pickle, but. Um, we'll use those pre-bent um, pieces for the bottom and then we'll use the, 20, uh, the 32 for the top. So cut a stick at uh, 1400, chop it in half, smack it in the bender and uh, yeah, keep going. So we've uh, just finished doing the notching, well, I guess the trimming for one side. So we've got this piece here, it's all angled nice and um, it sits up, up in there like so. A bit hard with one hand, but um, next step is to weld it in at that end or tack it. Um, so we'll cable tie it at the other end, tack it up there, make sure we're happy with it before we actually burn it in. Um, <laughs> I managed to go and, uh, oh no, try and break my finger with the pipe bender, which you guys probably saw. Were you video? Oh, it's on video, sweet. So thankfully Ilsa's gone and um, did all the bending and that for me, because it was sore, but it's all right now, so we'll crack on, um, get this side done, and then match the other side. Hold it up. Come up looking real good. Alright guys, 10 o'clock. Now we've just got to do the other side. It's job done. The paint is going to have to wait for another day. I'm really chuffed with how this design's come out from just scrap metal lying around and a few hours in the shed. It's going alright. Approaching 10.30 now and uh, we've got the second tube all done. We're all ready to go. It's all notched at that end and uh, cut off at that end. Anyway, we'll whack it in there. And then, final step is just to uh, chop those and cap them. Oh, it's gonna be a late one. Job done. <laughs> uh, we're not gonna bother capping off the plates, or uh, capping off the tube tonight. It's uh, almost 11 o'clock, so I reckon just call it a day here. But that's that, guys. Bar done. Catch you guys tomorrow, and we'll see if we can uh, get through a warrant of fitness all right. Guys, we got the warrant of fitness. How good. So I uh, popped into the testing station before work, and uh, yeah, flew through. They were happy with everything, so I'm stoked on that. Um, as you can probably tell, still raining, absolutely tipping it down. Um, and unfortunately, surprise, surprise, we've already got rust on the bar, so I am going to um, drop the bar down. I'm going to have a hunt around, see if I can find the, the lower ratio gearbox for this winch that I've got. I know it's somewhere, but if I can't find it, it won't matter. Now that we've got the dual battery set up, it should be pulling plenty hard. Um, and then I'll pull the winch out quickly, just so that we can make sure that uh, everything's good in there before the trip. 
and um, slap into the different gearbox if I can find it and we'll um, dry off the tubes and wax some paint on there as well. Well, that's the winch out. So frustrating. This thing just does not seem to love life. Um, it just always is corroding up in the motor. They're not a waterproof motor or a sealed motor. We've done our best to waterproof it. Um, however, th th this thing just needs to go. I've got an overwinch waiting to go in, but it just doesn't quite fit with the trans cooler there. The overwinch is a slightly taller winch. So um, this thing's going to be doing us a few more rounds yet. So yeah. We'll whip the motor out and have a look. motor out um, just a rough bodge to get us through the trip we've given the uh, brush holders a quick clean up uh, inside so just in there um, each of them and then uh, also cleaned up the armature of the motor uh, down there so got everything looking nice and clean again it was just one brush that had seized in the um, brush holder um, so we'll now whack that all back together and put the motor in um, I've also got the different ratio gearbox here which I'll sling on um, so this one here is a 110 to 1 um, versus what's in there which is an 80 to 1 so having that fast oh sorry having that slower ratio we will lose a little bit of line speed but it'll be so beneficial when it comes to uh, trying to haul this big wagon up big hills um, one of the tracks we're planning on doing over um, this coming trip is quite a doozy um, it's got a big pull on it don't know if the track's going to happen, it'll depend on the weather, but if we do it, I want all the power in the world with this winch. So between the dual batteries and the new gearbox, that should help. Um, so yeah, next step, throw the motor back together, sit it aside, strip the winch, change the gearbox, throw it all back together and back in the truck. And then I can tackle um, putting a bit of paint on the ends of those bars, and then uh, on to the next job. <laughs> Sounds easy, but I better keep going. Righto guys, so we've got the winch all back together, um, motor's very roughly rebuilt, I shouldn't say rebuilt, it's bodged enough to get us through, obviously sanding back all the um, brush holders it's just going to corrode again, so it's not a long term solution but it'll get us through the weekend, 
and then uh, the new gearbox will help with changing over the handles as well because this one's bent down to uh, clear the trans cooler because uh, it's uh, quite a tight fit in there. So the winch is all ready to put back in, um, but I'm not going to bother filming that because it's quite the mission. So we'll catch you when the winch is back in and we can uh, tackle painting up the uh, wings of which we added onto the bar last night. Oh, how good is that? Righto guys, well there you go, slap some paint on it, real rough, real shoddy but um, this bar will be coming back off fairly soon, I've got to do some finish welding on it but just to stop it rusting on the trip we'll, uh, we've gone and slap some paint on it so next thing to do is jack the uh, bar up and uh, bolt it back in and um, yeah that's another job off the list and that's pretty much it for everything other than we've got to put the 35s back on but we won't bother filming that and yeah we'll be uh, ready to head to the coast super stoked and fast forwarding a few weeks obviously we're back from the coast um, we got the warrant got all the stuff built up and um, yeah the truck performed amazingly on the coast as you'll see in the next few videos um, they are some awesome videos some of the hardest full driving I've ever done so stay tuned for all that um, by hitting subscribe if you haven't already uh, but yes that is the end of the video I just totally forgot to wrap up we were in such a rush to get the truck ready um, I don't know how it always ends up coming down to the wire anyway as you can see the truck is uh, back in the shed um, we've got the swivel housing out right now there's a bit of a story which I forgot to add in the last video um, when the locker bust, uh, the old locker broke, um, it actually damaged the splines on the chromoly um, axle to the point where it couldn't be used. So we had to get a new one ordered and it wasn't going to arrive in time. So Dad very kindly let me pinch his whole swivel hub assembly out of um, his disco here. So we just pinched essentially everything from um, that flange across. Um, took it out and just slapped it straight into, uh, into Lando there. However, now that we're back from the coast, obviously, <laughs> Dad wants it back. So uh, we've got a new axle care of Kingpin design, um, even stronger than the old Raptor one that we're running. Not that it was a, you know, a failure because of the shaft, it was a failure because of the locker. Um, but yeah, we've got a Kingpin design maxi drive axle going back in. Um, so yeah, just got, waiting on the last couple parts and we can build that axle back up. But yeah, I just wanted to say a huge, huge thank you to uh, Dad for uh, the loan of that. Um, yeah, there's no way we could have done that trip um, on stock axle shafts um, or a stock axle shaft. It just wouldn't have been possible. So huge thanks to Dad for the loan of that and also all the time he put into it, um, you know, helping me swap everything over. Um, yeah, massively appreciated. Huge thanks to Ilsa as well for uh, coming and hanging out and uh, just being a spare pair of hands in the shed um, while we rushed through getting uh, everything together. Um, yeah, if it weren't for, uh, weren't for getting that bar done and... Um, the winch gearbox change and all of that sort of stuff yeah just the trip wouldn't have happened so yeah really appreciative of um, all the help I had to get the truck done and um, trust me it was all worth it as you guys will see in the upcoming videos the first coast trip video drops uh, next Monday so stay tuned for that by hitting subscribe give us a like if you've enjoyed today's video bit of a struggle I know but uh, yeah we got there and uh, leave a comment down below of what you think of the, uh, the whole setup we'll catch you all in the next one cheers guys for watching we'll see you then